Okay, so welcome everyone to CT14 Garage in Bangkok, Thailand. Today we've got this Porsche Cayman 987, uh, which has got a PDK issue. The customer received several warnings on the dash while he was driving related to transmission emergency run and transmission over temperature. He brought the car to our garage. We have test driven it. We have verified that there is a problem indeed with the gearbox. It is not smooth when shifting under load, the transmission jerks. And upon diagnosis with Porsche Peewees, we have found that the problem is indeed with the sensor inside the gearbox. This is a common issue with PDK, with uh, PDK gearboxes. Normally, the part that fails is this one, which is the shift position sensor. But in this particular case of this beautiful yellow Cayman, what has failed is the speed sensor, which is connected to the shift position sensor. Now, um, we only offer the complete replacement. These are remanufactured parts. We repair them ourselves. So if you're in need of this sensor, hit me up. We can probably arrange something for you. And so today, we're also gonna show you how to replace this sensor. Open the gearbox, replace the sensor, recalibrate the gearbox with PeeWees so the car will be ready. Now, the first step to do this repair is we need to remove the exhaust and we need to remove the casing of the gearbox. In the case of the Caymans, we don't have to remove the gearbox from the car. However, in the case of the 911s, like 997, the gearbox will, be, will need to be removed from the car, so there is enough space to work on it. Now, in order to open the PDK gearbox, we need a special tool, which we have developed and manufactured ourselves. We can ship this to you, so hit us up if you're in need of it. We can have one built for you and ship. The way this works is I will show it later, but basically you use this tool to pry on the gearbox casing and open the gearbox straight, because if you don't open it straight, you will damage the gearbox. So in order to carry out this repair, it's very important to use the appropriate special tool. Now, I will have the employees remove the exhaust and the plastic casing around the gearbox and we will proceed with the repair. Okay, so when removing the exhaust, there is a trick which will help the task much easier and that is to remove the wheels. You remove both wheels and if you come over here, you will see that the mid pipe or what in a normal sedan car would be the mid pipe and end pipe is bolted to the catalytic converters here just behind the wheel there's three screws as you can see here one two and three if the camera focuses one two and three by removing these three screws and then removing the bolts that hold the exhaust to the car you can very easily remove the exhaust okay so now we have we have finished removing the exhaust as well as the casing of the gearbox in order to remove the casing of the gearbox you have to remove these arms they're held in place by six 16 millimeters bolts once you undone them this will come out and then you can remove the cage of the gearbox, which will give you direct access to the oil pan. Now, the next, step, the next step in this repair is to drop the oil pan and remove all the oil from the transmission. We're obviously gonna be installing a new oil pan with its filter, because this is the only proper way to do this repair. New oil pan, new filter, new screws which need to be bolted at 2.7 newton meters of torque. Now, if you will come this way, please. Come, come this way, please. There is something rather important here that I want to clear out for everyone. A PDK gearbox like this one, in total, between fill holes and drain holes, in total has four of them. 
Now, you don't want to confuse them, so please listen to me because this is very important. This one right here is the uh, drain hole for the PDK clutch. The oil you drain through here is the same as this one, the Pentosin FFL3 fluid. So you drain the PDK clutch oil from here, and once you are done installing the new pan, you will refill it from this fill hole right here, which is on the left side when looking at the car from the back, this one right here. Now, on the other side of the gearbox, you have the drain hole for the final gear oil, which is a 75W90 oil. You can use Mobilube or you can use the original Porsche one. You will drain it from this fill hole and you will refill it from this fill hole. So now what we're gonna do is remove the oil and we will proceed further with the repair. Okay, so now we have finished removing both the PDK clutch oil and the differential oil from the gearbox and now it's time to use the special tool to open the gearbox. We're gonna start using these four parts of the special tool which we're gonna screw into the four holes at the rear of the gearbox. Okay, after we're done with this step, we need to remove those two rubber cap seals at the rear of the gearbox. We're going to reuse them, so we need to be very careful. We can pry them out, but we need to be very careful not to break them. So that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so now we have removed all the screws that hold the gearbox casing to the gearbox itself. All of them around it. Then there's one more hidden up here. And you have to remove this sling as well. Wait, there goes the flashlight. Now we're going to use the special tool to open the gearbox. And so in order to do that, the first thing that we need to do is screw the special tool onto the gearbox. So we're going to do now. Okay. Okay, so now we have finished opening the PDK gearbox. As you can see, we've got here its casing using the special tool as an extractor to pull it out. Now, when doing this step, there's a few things you want to be mindful of. One of them is you want to make sure, you definitely want to make sure that you've removed all the screws around the gearbox. You don't want to be pulling on it with a screw inside. And then, well, first of all is these rubber caps. These rubber caps will be sitting here on the shafts and you need to pry them out. Don't be scared of using force. They don't break that easily. You can pry them out, no problem. And you can reuse them as well. However, if you end up breaking them, I will leave you the PAN number up here so you can order them. They're not expensive. After you're done removing these caps, on the bottom shaft, you will have this lock, like this. This lock, you have to remove it, or this nut, I should say, you have to remove it 
with this special tool that we provide in the set. It locks to the nut and you can pull it out with a ratchet. Do not use electric impact gun or air guns. Do it by hand, even if you need a breaker bar. Now, we can see here the sensor. If I get a flashlight, this right here is the shaft positioning sensor and it's held in place by three, one, two, and three up there, Torx screws. Then at the very top, you have the speed sensor, which is held in place with another two Torx screws. And here at the very bottom is the connector, which we need to undo before proceeding further with the repair. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. Okay, so we have finished removing the shaft positioning sensor from the gearbox. This is the old one. And the part which is bad is this one, which is the shaft speed sensor. Um, while doing this repair, we also verified that the final gear oil level was slightly low, around one liter low, which is quite a lot. Probably that caused overheating and um, well that's not good news for you if you're a plastic sensor that the oil you're submerging gets too hot definitely not good news anyway the sensor is out so we can toss this one away and send it to our lab for repairs because what we will do now is install the brand new or brand new remanufactured one into the gearbox um, basically just follow all the steps in reverse install the sensor in the gearbox close the gearbox put the caps uh, install the exhaust and then we're gonna fill the gearbox with oil first we need to put three liters of final gear oil uh, 75w90 uh, the procedure is just pour the oil through the fill hole until it starts overflowing. Once it starts overflowing, you're done. But make sure you've put around 3 liters. It may not be exactly 3, but 2.9 or something like that is good enough. It's the correct amount. Then what we need to do is um, start pouring PDK oil through the PDK clutch oil fill hole. Uh, we're going to put around uh, four liters or so until it starts overflowing. And once it starts overflowing, you're going to grab your PeeWee's computer and you're going to put the gearbox into fill mode. And then it's going to take around uh, a further liter, maybe 1.3 liters, something like that. And then you'll be done. Once you have finished filling the gearbox, we will have to do the gearbox adaptation using PeeWee's as well, because there's a new sensor, so we have to deal uh, we have to do the uh, gearbox adaptation again. Um, so yeah, let's get to work.
Okay, so it's 12 a.m. at night. We've been test driving this car for the past three hours, put around 200 kilometers in it to make sure that the gear is smooth. It is indeed smooth. Now we've come back to the garage. We've put it up on the lift. And we've, we are making sure that there's no leaks whatsoever, neither from the oil pan nor from the junction of the final gear of the PDK with the PDK. Now, I have to apologize because we didn't record uh, while we were assembling it back. This is because in a few days here in Thailand, we have one of the biggest Porsche meetings. Happens once a year and it's called Dash Treffen. It's going to be within two days time and this customer rushed us to get his car ready for Dash Treffen. So we didn't focus much on recording. We just focused on finishing the car. But I took many pictures and I will leave them here on the video. Thank you all.